So today we are going to visit section DSMA 10 and talk about proportions. Before we start with proportions, we're going to go back and review just a little bit about the percent equations that we worked on in a previous section. So a percent equation will look like this. The amount is equal to the percent times the base. And for abbreviated purposes, what we used in class was A is equal to P times B. And remember I said, look at this P times B as peanut butter, so you know that they go together on the same side of the equal sign. Once again, this is called the percent equation. We also reviewed the percent proportion which we are going to go a little further in depth to today. And the percent proportion also uses the A over B is equal to the percent divided by 100. The amount divided by the base is equal to the percent divided by 100. Now, when you substitute the value in for the percent, we don't change the percent into a decimal, then place it into this formula. Because we are dividing by 100, that takes care of that decimal movement that we normally would do on the percent equation. All right, so let's get started. Okay, our first problem says, which equation correctly shown shows how to find the percent of the tiles that are white in a kitchen that has 2,000 um, times, or tiles, it should be tiles right here. Let's fix that. 75 of which are white. So let's read this again. Find the percent, so we're looking for P, of the tiles that are white in a kitchen that has 200 tiles. So it has a total of 200 tiles. So that's going to be our base amount. Lastly on here, it says we have 75 tiles that are white. That is a specific amount. So when we set this up, we're looking at our proportions. We have A over B is equal to P over 100. So my A is 75 divided by the base, a total of 200 tiles, which is now equal to P over 100. We don't know what P is. That's what this question would be looking for. But remember, it asked us to just write the proportion. So we need to go in and select one of these options that we have. A has 75 over 100 is equal to X over 200, which does not match our outcome. B is 75 over one, uh, 100, which is equal to 75 over 200. That one is missing a variable on it, option B. And the last one says X over 100, which is similar to our P over 100, is equal to 75 over 200. So we would choose option C. This is the proportion that represents the number of tiles out of 200, given that we have 75 white tiles. This next 
problem is asking us to solve. Remember, when we say solve, and this is an equation with an equal sign, your goal is to end up with x equal to a number. It says type an integer or a simplified fraction. So it is a possibility we may have a fraction as an outcome. When we work on this problem, if you remember before, we had to do what's called a cross product. Right. When you have a fraction set equal to a fraction, you can do what's called a cross product. We're going to take the numerator of one fraction and multiply by the denominator of the other fraction and vice versa. The numerator of the first fraction times the denominator of the other fraction. So what will that give us is 8 times 5 equals to 7 times x. This is called a cross product. Next, we'll simplify that. 8 times 5 will give us 40 is equal to 7x. Next, we're going to focus on this 7x. We want it to be just x. So since this is 7 times x. We're going to go opposite of multiplying is divide, so we will divide by 7. When you divide by 7 on one side of your equation, you must also do the opposite side. So in this case, 7 divided by 7 on the right-hand side, 7 divided by 7 is just 1. And 1 times x is x. So what happens is it leaves us an answer of 40 over 7 is equal to x. And this would be our simplified fraction when we look at 40 divided by 7. It does not divide evenly. It did not ask us for a mixed number, so you will not enter a mixed number at this time. Let's read this carefully. Translate the question to a proportion. Do not solve. So let's not waste our time solving. Do not solve. Use the letter A if the unknown is the amount. Use the letter B if the unknown is the base. And P if the unknown is a percent. So remember, we had the word is means equal and of means to multiply. And we can identify what we have here. If you want to run a percent equation first to help you out, go right ahead. We're going to identify what we have. 32% that is by P. Of means times. 50, remember this is peanut butter, so this must be my B, is, is equal, and what number? That's my unknown amount. That's my A. Translate the question to a proportion. So what they want us to do is to write A over B is equal to P over 100. We'll fill in what we do know. We do know, we don't know what A is, we do know what B is. B is 50, equal sign, and P is 32%. Remember, just leave off the percent symbol. And the divide by 100 represents the percent symbol. And this will give you your proportion that represents this problem. We have another one just like it. It says do not solve. We need to make sure and not solve it. Same conditions. What number is, is my equal, 72% of means times, 
and they gave us our peanut butter again. So that means we're looking for A. Translate into proportion. A over B is equal to P over 100. We are looking for A. Let's insert my value for B, which is 182. And P is 72%. So 72 divided by 100. And this is the proportion that represents this problem. So this is a nice set of practice exercises that are setting you up for how to set up a proportion and then eventually with our cross product to solve that proportion. Once again, let's go straight into our proportion. Let's identify what we have. 16 and 6 tenths is 47% of times what number? So they gave me an A is equal to P times B. My what number this time is the B. So I have A, which is 16 and 6 tenths, divided by B, my unknown, is equal to my percent, 47 percent, divided by 100. And then you want to be very careful to look over and read carefully and choose wisely. So we actually match. D here. So have the patience to review each of the answers and select the correct one. Okay, this next problem, this is for the food described, find the percent of total calories from fat. Ranch dressing serves a serving size of two tablespoons. So they're giving us the total calories is 50, and the amount of calories from fat is 15. So it looks like what we need to do on this one is to set up, because they want us to find the percent of total calories. So right off the bat, you know you're looking for P. The percent of total calories. So since we're looking for P, that means they gave us A and they gave us B. So let's identify which one's which. So B is the base amount, which would be the total calories. Just identifying what's provided in the reading. And A would be the smaller amount from the fat specifically. So this is my B. And this is my A. In this problem, they want us to actually solve. So let's create our proportion. A over B is equal to P divided by 100. Because it is a proportion, we can do our cross product. We'll take this numerator, multiply it by this denominator, and the numerator of the first fraction, and multiply it by the denominator of the second fraction. That will leave me with 50 times P is equal to 15 times 100, or 1,500. So 50p is equal to 1,500. Again, to solve for p, we need to get rid of that 50 that's with it. So since this is a multiplication right here, we're going to undo a multiplication by dividing. What do you do to one side? We do to the opposite side. Once again, 50 divided by 50 is just 1. And 1 times p will leave us just the percent p. And then from here, you can place this in your calculator. 
or if you want to reduce, you can divide by 10, and that'll take out the two zeros here. And you will have 150 divided by 5, which will give you 30%. Don't forget to place your percent symbol if you're doing this hand on your paper. So what we can say is that 30% of our total calories come from fat. All right, we're getting into some more application problems here. In one country, approximately 147,000 of 980,000 restaurants are pizza restaurants. That means out of a total of 980,000 restaurants, 147,000 is pizza restaurants. Determine the percentage. Again, we are looking for P of the restaurants in the country that are pizza restaurants. All right, so since we're finding P, they want us to find P. Let's identify what we have. So the total number of restaurants, that's going to be your base. So base is 980,000 total restaurants. The number of those that are actually pizza restaurants, 147,000. And since we are in the section of proportions, we're going to continue to use proportions for the work on here. So A. divided by B is equal to what percent over 100? Now, if you would like to, you can leave the numbers as is and just let your calculator uh, run with these numbers, or you can go ahead and reduce that fraction. So I'm going to go to the side and reduce the fraction so that I can have smaller numbers. So what I'm choosing to do is to divide out. If I divide each of these by 1,000, because I notice that each number has three zeros, what that will do for me is to cancel out those zeros or divide out those zeros. And that would leave me with 147 over 980. This is your choice. You don't have to do it that way. So what I have now is 147 over 980. And if you want to reduce, or you can reduce further, you can also choose to do so. I just prefer to work with smaller numbers when I'm doing my cross product. All right, now we're going to do our cross product. And that will give me 980 P is equal to, and 147 times 100. We'll add two zeros there. Divide by 980. On the sides of your equation. And that will leave you P on the left side. And if we place this in our calculator, it looks like we will get 15%. So this is a nice example of a little application problem. You want to carefully read through your problem, identify what are you looking for, and it says determine the percentage. So you're looking for P. Go back and read it again and find out what information was provided to you. 980,000 restaurants. That's your total count. That's your base number. 147,000 pizza restaurants. 
that's an amount that's just a portion of the total number of restaurants. Place it into your proportion formula and solve from there. All right, our next problem says a, a eight ounce iced tea, uh, a certain restaurant has 72 calories. How many calories are there in a 22 ounce? So we have an eight ounce versus a 22 ounce. And what you can do on this one is, you want to remember, you can do ounces in the numerator divided by the calories. Or you can do the um, opposite, calories first over ounces. All right, and the way I'm going to set this up is with the first size, I have eight ounces over 72 calories. And I'm going to set that equal to the 22 ounce divided by, I don't know how many calories. That's what it's asking me is the 22 ounce iced tea has how many calories. So from here, I'll do my cross product. This has 72 times 22 is equal to 8 times x. And that should give us 1,584 is equal to 8x. Divide both sides of the equation by 8 so that you get x by itself. Again, 8 divided by 8 is 1. 1 times x is x. And we put this in our calculator, and we're coming up with 198 is equal to x. So, the 22 ounce iced tea has 198 calories. So when we compare the two different sizes that's being served at this restaurant, we're going to go ahead and say that they're proportional so that you can solve for the number of calories on that 22 ounce iced tea. All right, so this is the end of our lecture for DSMA 10.